Hi, this is Nick Pizai. This is another video in our series of practical or applied math for water treatment plant operators. Let me share this video and screen with you. This is the seventh in a series of practical math for water treatment plant operators. And we wanna say again, thank you to the Lake County Department of Utilities for letting us use their uh, facilities, their design of their facilities and their operational data. We're gonna switch plants today. We've been using the Aquarius plant for the first six practical treatment operator math manuals. Now we're gonna to switch to the Bacon Road or their Eastern water treatment plant. So again, thanks to them. Let's get started on Bacon Road. We again start with some of the tables that you are familiar with by now for looking at some of the other videos. This is a handy useful table that you can use for when you need to convert between uh, US and standard units, uh, metric units. I think you know how to work that by now. This table here uh, has been updated. It's got some of the familiar stuff, but starting with the third column, you can see that we've gone to the Bacon Road Water Treatment Plant now, which is a nine MGD conventional facility on Lake Erie. The Aquarius plant was a 20 MGD facility, now we're at nine. The water treatment plant has a raw water intake that is 4,000 feet long. It's connected to, into Lake Erie with a, a crib that has three 36 inch pipes upturned. And it's a 40. Now we're working with May data. I'll show you some of that. Uh, the water treated in the month of May was 89.102 million gallons. Going to the next column, we see that the raw station was designed uh, at a Lake Erie elevation level of 573 feet. That's critical to one of the problems coming up. Now the water comes in through the intake and it comes into the raw water station where there are two screen wells and two pump wells. The water goes through the screens and into the pump wells and each of those have a bottom elevation of 558 feet. Now, Just like Aquarius, uh, the Bacon Road plant adds potassium permanganate at the screen wells. There are four raw water pumps. We have the dimensions of the screen wells there. You can see, let me move my uh, thing out of the way here. Screen wells are seven and a half by 18 and a half. The pump wells are 24 and a half by 30. They're in parallel and we isolated from one another into two groups. Now there are four raw water pumps. Two of them are 2,604 gallon per minute each with 120 feet total dynamic head with a variable frequency drive on them. They also have two fixed speed pumps. One of them is a small pump at 1,750 gallon per minute. The other is a larger pump at 3,500 gallon per minute. Each of them has a total dynamic head rating of 90 feet. Goes on to say that permanganate usage in a month was 172 pounds and it gives you a cost of $3.12 per pound per permanganate. Okay, so let's move on to question number one here. Question number one says this. What's the total volume of water held in the wells at the raw water station as designed? And you may recall I told you there were two screen wells and two wet wells serve as suction for the pumps. How much total volume are there? Okay, here's how I went about this problem. I look into the tables and I see that there are two screen wells and each of them are seven and a half feet by 18 and a half feet. And the two pump wells are 24 and a half feet by 30 feet. That's the only dimensions they gave for those. But from the table, we also see that the bottom level of the wells is 558 feet, whereas Lake Erie's surface was 573 feet. So the bottom of the wells subtracted from the surface will tell you that the wells must be 15 feet deep evenly across. So when we do the problem, we've got the volume of two clear wells, so I put a two there, and I'm adding together the, um, the calculation of both of the wells. The first one was seven and a half by 18 and a half by 15, and the pump wells were 24 and a half by 30 by 15. I'm gonna multiply those by two, and convert them to gallons by multiplying by 7.48, and I get approximately 196,000 gallons. Hope you did well on that. And as, every, as I always remind you, if you want to work through these problems, go ahead and pause the video at each time I offer you a question and you can try to work them out on your own. So with that, let's go to question number two. Question number two says, the operators at Bacon Road keep the permanganate strength at 0 0.2 pounds per gallon in the day tank. So in other words, when they go fill the day tank up every night, uh, they put X amount of gallons in it. And you put X times 0.2 pounds of chemical in it to, to bring it up to level. How many milliliters per minute were fed in May on average? And then what was the dosage based on that feed rate? 
So there's two questions here we want to look at. So we need to go into tables and find out some information here. When I look, I see from the table that we used 172 pounds of permanganate in May. We know that May is a, is a month with uh, 31 days. So 172 pounds in May, multiplied by the fact that each gallon had 2 pounds, 0.2 pounds of chemical in it, that tells me I must have used 860, 860 gallons of the permanganate solution to provide that 172 pounds of usage. So if I take the 860 gallons and convert that to milliliters by multiplying by 3,785, I divide by 30 days and I divide each of those days by 1,440 minutes, I would see that they would have a feeder setting of about 75.3 milliliters per minute fed on average. So now the second part of that was what was the dosage? Well, from the table, I can see that the total water treated was listed as 89,102,000 gallons, or 89.102 million gallons, mg. I'm going to take that 179 or 172 pounds and divide it by the, the pumpage of 89.102. I see that we fed at a rate of 1.93 pounds per million gallons. And of course, to convert that to milligrams per liter, I would divide by 8.34. And I come up with a dosage of 0 0.23 milligrams per liter dosage. Hope you got that one. Let's move on to question number three. Question number three states, what's the velocity of flow in feet per second in the intake when the small fixed speed pump is operated as designed? And once you've done that, why don't you list what problems might the operator expect at that velocity? Okay, so they're wanting you to figure out the velocity. So we got to get some information from the tables here. You see that the small pump is rated at 1,750 gallons per minute, and they're asking us to use that flow rate as designed. So we're going to use 1,750 flow rate. We see that the intake in the table is listed as a 48-inch diameter or four-foot diameter steel pipe. So we know that the velocity always equals the flow rate divided by the square foot area or the square area. So what I'm going to do is put V equal to the flow rate converted to cubic feet, which is 1,750 gallons per minute divided by the 7.48 will give me cubic feet per minute, divided by the square foot area will be 0.785 times four times four. I come up with 18.63 feet per minute or about a 0 0.31 feet per second. Now that's pretty slow. As you recall from other videos that we've put together, we, we tell you that the uh, engineers like to design flow velocities in a pipe somewhere between one and five feet per second. And again, the reason for that, when you have a low velocity in a pipe, any solids that come in with the water will tend to settle out. In fact, organic solids will tend to settle out somewhere around an average of 0.8 feet per second. And the uh, inorganic solids will tend to settle out at a little bit higher rate, 1.3 feet per second. So if you don't get up to those rates, you can expect that some of those solids, both organic and inorganic, sand and grit, that type of thing, you're going to settle out in your main. You're going to reduce carrying capacity over time. So you're going to have to get in there more frequently to clean those mains out. So that's something that they're forced into. There's not much they can do about it. They've got to think about that. Now, I will tell you there are some other flows that that pipe is used for that bring the velocity up a little bit. But I just wanted to be able to point out this, this uh, flow rate. Okay, let's move on to question number four. Using the value calculated in question number one and the flow rate from question number three, Calculate the theoretical detention time of the water from the beginning of the intake all the way through to the raw water station. So now we've, we've calculated uh, some of that already from some of the problems. We've got to go check question number one and question number three to get these pieces of information. We know the detention time is going to be the volume divided by the flow rate. So to get the volume, we're going to have to calculate the pipe volume and add it to the volume of the wells, which we already calculated in another question will give us the total volume of the wells plus the pipe, and we divide that by the flow rate. So the detention time is going to become this, 0 0.785 times 4 times 4 times 4,000 feet. That's how long the intake is. And I convert that to gallons by multiplying by 7.48. And I'm going to take that value and add it to the, the volume of the wells that I already calculated, which was 196,000. Add those two together, and I can divide by the 1,750 gallon per minute rate. So the detention time becomes 375,795 gallons plus the 196,000 gallons divided by 1750 gallons per minute, or about 326 minutes, which is roughly 5.45 hours. That's a long time. 
you can see that when the water moves that slow, it, it creates a lot of detention time, makes sense. All right, let's move on to the last question, question number five. Using the pumping rate from question number three and information from the tables, what horsepower was developed by the pump installation if the efficiency of it was 88%? This is a standard horsepower problem. We've gone over a few of these for the other plant. Let's try, let's try Bacon Road horsepower. When you're gonna use this formula for horsepower, gallon per minute times the head divided by 3960 times the efficiency. And if you wanna know a little bit about horsepower, remember to go back and check out some of the other videos we've put online that explain hydraulics and horsepower and the basic math uh, videos that we've put up, which you can find at the end of this, uh, at the end of this presentation, a link to some of those channels. Anyway, getting back to the problem, the horsepower is gonna be 1,750 gallon per minute times that 90 foot head, which you had to find from going into the tables, divided by the 3960 and the 88% that they gave you turned into a decimal, which is 0 0.88. And I would come up with about 45.2 horsepower. Okay, those were fairly simple. I promise you they're gonna get a little bit more complicated as we go on through the plant of Bacon Road. Hopefully you had a chance to uh, work on some of these problems and get them, get them right. And we want to thank uh, Lake County, Ohio Utilities for the use of the data at the Bacon Road plant. And of course, this video again is part of the Applied or Practical Math for Operator series that we're putting up. You're going to find a couple of links that will scroll up shortly or appear. You can click on those links and uh, be brought into other, other uh, videos or the whole channel itself if you want to subscribe and you'll be notified when these videos are available. And I hope this has been helpful to you. So thank you. Check back for future videos. Good luck on your exams.